Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Sadashiva Samarambam Shankarasharya Madhyamam Asmadasharya Pariantam Bande Guru Param Param Om Shanti 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 Om Namaste Welcome everyone so we begin today from the discrimination of the elements. We saw last week the nature of uh, existence. Now we looked a little bit into the nature of the, the second aspect of the self, yeah? chit, and now existence. So Panchadas presents the chit, the, the knowledge, conscious aspect first. It's more easily, be, easily understood and recognized by us since we are good reflectors yeah? or since we are reflections of this cheat yeah? and uh, and then it began analyzing the nature of the jagata as the inert universe of matter yeah? so we looked into the introduction of this analysis on the existence of the self and now we're going to look into the, the formation, the creation, the manifestation, the development of this material universe. Yeah? And uh, we, we don't want to look into the elements for the sake of, uh, of curiosity or, or trying to understand matter. But uh, every time we look into into the world of Mitya, the world of the elements, we look with the aim of discriminating the self from its, uh, its tamas manifestation, its material manifestation, meaning to say the universe of, uh, of forms and colors. Huh? <clears throat> Let me close this one here. Okay, if, we, if you see anyone, if you see by any chance Karen coming, try to come, please help me to, to see it, but I, I don't believe so. Discrimination of the elements is the purpose. With the verse number one, it says that the Upanishads say that the self is non-dual and can be known by differentiating the self itself from the five elements. So you see, every time we, we make our analysis of, uh, of media, analysis of, uh, of our experience, huh? we do that for the sake of differentiating it from or separating it or discriminating it from the light of the illuminator that illumines and reveals and knows all these different aspects of our human experience. So now the Upanishad here is saying that uh, we're going to look into this, uh, this, this non-dual nature of the self, by what? By discriminating the five elements. Uh? So now we are not discriminating the three gunas. Sometimes we say like we're going to reveal the self by discriminating the self from the three fundamental blocks of the universe, which are the three energies. So here we're going to reveal the self by discriminating it from the five elements. The five elements is already a development, huh? a further development of, of this manifest universe that begins with the three energies, Satchiva, Rajas, and Tamas. Satchiva, Rajas, and Tamas gives birth to the five subtle elements. So now we're going to try to understand how the subtle elements came into place and uh, the way we perceive the world through these five elements, uh, the sense organs developed from these five subtle elements and so on so that in due time we can differentiate our experience from the self. Huh? 
So this process of differentiation of the self from the five elements will now be discussed in detail. This process is a matter of experience. Nice. It's not philosophy. It's not metaphysics. It's just like it's based on our day-to-day -day experience of life. The self is eternal existence, is free of qualities, and it's free of limiting factors. It's free of defining factors, let's say as well. Huh? The qualities, properties that define something does not apply for the self. The self being eternal existence is free of all possible qualities, properties that limits, uh, defines and limits things in the world. So all objects are defined and limited by its own properties. <clears throat> but as we know, the self is not the object, is not an object, it is the ultimate subject. <clears throat> so we're going to see that the self is free of any possible limiting factors, okay, or adjunctures, and so on. So it can only be known by analyzing the nature of its effect. So how can we analyze the self if the self has nothing by which we can, we can look at it, you know? I mean, the self, the Upanishads are gonna say, oh, you want to know more about the self? It is consciousness, knowledge. Okay. Oh no, this is not enough. Okay, it is existence. Huh? Still, we don't we don't have much, yeah, much substance to try to understand what the self is. Yeah? It is eternal existence, and it's free of properties, qualities. There is nothing that defines it. Therefore, it's limitless because anything that defines things limits that mm -hmm. thing. So it can only be known by analyzing the nature of its effects because analyzing the nature of existence and consciousness is something yeah, into the realm of the impossible. Yeah? So we need, we need the revealed knowledge of the Upanishads that helps us to understand the self that which cannot be objectified, that which cannot be known by the sense organs and the mind. Elizabeth, you having trouble? Oh, you need to unmute. Okay. What page? What page are we on? Okay. The page we are on is uh, pa, 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 54. Halfway on the 54, discrimination of the elements. But in the in the in the ebook. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm going to mute you. I'm going to mute you now, now okay? Okay. Uh, okay. Your, your mic is make strange noise. Elizabeth, you have the big picture. It's not the big picture. It's Panchadasi. It's inquiry into existence. Very well. well good catch. <laughs> Oh, I think she decided to abandon us. Elizabeth has all new computers and phones yeah. and everything, and she's suggesting, and so it's, mm -hmm. I think that's it. Okay. Now she's back. We are waiting for you.
So going back to the self, eternal existence has no qualities and, uh, and it's going to be analyzed by observing its effects. Since the self cannot be analyzing directly because there is nothing, you know, there is no property, there is no attributes, qualities, you know, and so on, that uh, would allow us to analyze the self. You know? So we need to look into its effects and the effects we know, right? it is beautiful world you know, that lean likes and loves so much. The effect is the creation, the world, which seems to limit us. Now, when we say it seems to limit the self, so the self does not have any sense of limitation, but uh, the jiva self, which is by nature equal to the self, becoming the knower, experiencing entity, suffers this sense of limitation. Yeah? And uh, so it seems, the, the world seems to limit the self, limits the jiva self. So jiva atyama seems to be limited by, by, by the world, you know? And then it feels like uh, I need to discover my true self. And more often than less, it wants to remove the world as a means to literally remove the world as a means to be get rid of the sense of limitation. So Vedanta comes to say, you don't need to destroy the world. You don't need to destroy the mind. You just need to understand that the world is just an appearance in your own consciousness. And consciousness is whole, full and complete and ever always free and independent from any experience that this apparent reality may produce to the Jiva Atma. No? So it's all a question of understanding the nature, the apparent nature of the world and the real nature of the self we are. Yeah? <clears throat> but to begin with, it seems to limit the self. If the limiting aspects or factors I eliminate, the self can be known as limitlessness. Yeah? So we need to eliminate all these limiting aspects or factors or, or things that we, we believe to be the jivatima. And the jivatima feels to be limited, as we know, yeah? and we need to, to see which aspect of our human experience makes us feel limited. Yeah? And all of that is going to be analyzed beginning with the development of the sense organs, the organs by which we become attached to the world of physical and subtle object. <clears throat> the Shandakya Upanishad says, before creation, this universe, which is the object of our experience, was in the form of pure existence. It was non-dual, meaning to say one without a second. This world, this self became an object of experience. This very self, which is non-dual, one without a second, became an object of experience as Jagat. When Ishwara Maya created the five elements and out of the five elements, Ishwara Maya create the sense organs. And through the sense organs, the living beings, the living creatures began objectifying, experiencing, and knowing the world. Yeah. So this is all work of Maya in, in, in a joint venture with Ishwara. Yeah. They say, let's, let, let's create the world out of this non-dual self, Huh? And then we're going to have duality, and we'll see what happens. So the self appears as an object known as the world, Jagat.
the organs are transactional components of Ishwara and appear as knowledge gathers, yan, yanindriyas. So these organs of perception yeah, and actions as well, they are transactional, as we know, they belong to the mind, to the subtle body. Yeah. They, are, they belong to Ishwara, as we know, ultimately Ishwara is creating the world. Ishwara needs to bring the stage on which the individual souls can go about experiencing and processing karma, processing vasana, né? and developing wisdom. And of course, from the beginning of times, it had to create the instruments by which the Jiva Atma can interact and collect data, collect experience, because it's through the window of contacting the world you know, and collecting extracting experience that we can convert experience into knowledge. And if we begin converting experience in good knowledge, the good knowledge is going to slowly, slowly, <clears throat> not make us all knowing, but will make us gradually walk away from objective knowledge. And, uh, and turn us around to look for the ultimate knowledge as we know. This is the process of maturity. Huh? But we need to begin with what? Duality, the sense organs that are going to be developed as we will see from the five subtle elements, okay? We have the elements being developed in the universe. Now the, the universe is in, in creation and then Simultaneously, out of the de developments, we have the sense organs of these primitive living creatures being developed, no? being developed. So the organs are the transactional components of Ishwara and appear as knowledge gathers, yanindriyas, and also as well organs of action, karmindriyas. The more properties an element enjoys, the grosser the element. We will see this in, in details. As we know, the earth's element is the denser element of the five elements. The space element is the subtler. The space possesses only yeah, one property, okay? Whereas this, the, the, the earth, Possess all the properties, okay? Sound and touch and smell and taste and uh, and the other one and, and color. So the denser, the denser the element, more properties it uh, integrates into itself. Huh? Have you ever imagined that the other five elements have no smell? Isn't it amazing? Huh? Water has no smell. The only element that has a smell to it is the earth. Huh? Very curious. The karma dharma field, nothing happens in the world. So let's try to see where that statement comes from because as we know, there is so much going on in the world lately. Uh, to say that nothing uh, really happens in the world is, is quite an statement. Uh. The following verse, the verse 2 to 46, are an analysis of existence taken from the Shandogya Upanishad. Verses 2 to 18 explain the objects to, the, to be discriminated from the self. So the objects will be the elements or more precisely the properties of the elements. The property of the five elements, as we know, are sound from the space, you know, touch from air, color from fire, taste from water and smell from earth. The number of properties of the five elements successively, successively are one, two, three, four, and five, meaning to say 
space has one property, yeah? and then air has two properties, and uh, and so on. And then uh, <clears throat> fire has three properties: sound, touch, and color. Water has four properties: sound, touch, color, and taste. And and the earth has sound, touch, color, taste, and smell, as we know. So the denser, the more properties we find in the element. So space has one property, which is sound. Air has two, sound and touch. Fire has three, sound, touch, and color. Water has four, as we just have seen. And Earth has the five elements, being the smell, a unique property inherent only to the Earth. Okay, because all the other, the, the space being the first one and the most pervasive, it's, it can be you know, very proud and say, oh, okay, I'm going to, <clears throat> to get going this whole game of creation here and I'm gonna spread myself through all the other elements. Huh? But then the earth element in the end and say, ah, you are all over the place, I am unique because only I myself, the earth, have the property of smell, you know? So I'm, I'm something more unique than you, yeah? So it's interesting to look <clears throat> and see the aspect of these properties as the objects become more and more dense and combined, combined or developed from the properties of the previous ones. Because sound, sounds arise in space, we infer that the property of space is sound. So there are two ways to, <clears throat> to say that this knowledge uh, is a valid means of knowledge. We can, we can testify yeah, or validate it by, by inference, okay? The, the, and the teachings of Vedanta, very rare aspects can be validated by perception alone. But perception and inference can help us to validate this knowledge. But this knowledge does not need to be validated because it is self-validated, being originated from, from the Vedas, from, from Ishwara itself. But here it says that because the sound arises in space, we also infer that the property of space is sound. So we can verify what the scripture is saying, say, yes, it's amazing. It, it does have sound. So it must be its property, its main property. They say, oh yeah, no, but it's not the main property because the space has all the properties. Somebody else will say a good objector. Yeah? They will say, yes, really, there is some other problem. Yes, it has a very, very subtle metaphysical property, which is accommodation. No, because space is the property, is the element that's going to accommodate all other elements. What it means that everything exists within the scope of space. No? So, but let's say space, we can infer that its property is sound. Air makes a rustling sound when it moves and it feels neither hot nor cold to the touch. So we are saying here that air has a sound such as space and air has also a feel, a touch feel, okay? Air has a touch feel and uh, it, it, it feels neither hot nor cold, although sometimes when the sun hits the air, and you jump into a motorcycle, for example, like when I used to live in Lucknow in India, the hot air used to burn our face during the summer. So we need to cover our face with some, some cloths and just leave a small space with a sunglass to come out of home at five in the afternoon when the, when the air was a little cooler. You know? But uh, if it's not added by the heat of this, the fire of the sun, it's neither hot nor cold. No? So this air is, makes some sound and uh, it moves as we know, and it feels 
neither hot nor cold to the touch, but it, it has a touch to itself. And then it goes into fire. Fire is hot and its color is red and sometimes yellowish. And uh, its flames make crackling sounds. So in fire, we have color, we have touch. We don't touch fire because we get burned as we know. Huh? And uh, it makes sound as well. Huh? So that is the, the, the way we experience fire. Water makes also sound, a rippling sound. It's cold to the touch unless we add heat of the fire huh? in the oven or uh, in, the, in the stove huh? to eat, but it's not primary inherent to, to the water as we know. Huh? Water makes a rippling sound. It's cold to the touch. It has no color. Huh? It is colorless huh? and it's sweet in taste. The earth makes a rattling. What is rattling sound? Like a baby rattle, something. Yeah, when, when something vibrates, it ah. often rattles. If it's touching something else, then it will make a rattling sound. Ah, it okay. Vibrates. okay, yeah. The earth makes a rattling sound. It is hard to the touch, comes in variety, <laughs> variated. Is that correct? Is that variegated? Huh? Variegated. Variegated. I did not know this word. Variegated colors and is sweet, sour, and so forth in taste. So there are some scriptures that describe the earth and the all the varieties of flavors, tastes. Huh? So we have tastes, we have uh, touch, we have colors, <laughs> we have uh, we have everything: color, sweetness, taste, and uh, and the sound as well. In the earth, the earth emits both pleasant and unpleasant smells. Yes, it was missing the smell, and then. The earth adds up a huge, huge variety of uh, herbs, or even the earth itself, which is not a herb, is uh, it's rich with all kinds of smells, as we know. And these smells are going to be experienced as pleasant and unpleasant smells. Thus, the characteristic properties of the five elements are enumerated. The five properties are recognized by the five sense organs. So how did it come about? So we have the development of space and out of space, the air is developed. And then out of air, which contains space to begin with an air, and then we have fire being developed. And each one of these elements are going to give rise to, to a sense 